Well, do I have a treat for you today. I have followed my guest today on Instagram for years and have always been so inspired, not just by her insane motivation and determination, but also by the positive energy she brings every day when she shows up on social media, a space that can often be so full of negativity. So many times I find myself watching her stories and just wishing I could ask her a question or get some advice, especially as I'm getting older and my body seems to be changing and not reacting to things the way it once did. Her story of how she got where she is today is so inspiring. And even though she is a total badass, I have to say she truly was one of the nicest people to sit down and talk with. She's here today sharing all her tips for how we too can be the best version of ourselves. So without further ado, let's get to it. Here's my conversation with celebrity trainer, Erin Opria. Well, welcome to the podcast, Erin Opria. I'm Thanks so excited me. to have you here. I have been really looking forward to this. Well, thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, so most of the listeners probably are following you. If they're not, they will be by the end of this. But for those of you, for those of you listening who are not following Erin, I will just tell everyone a little bit about you. You are one of the most sought after celebrity trainers in Nashville. You are the author of two best selling books. You created your own fitness app called Pretty Muscles. You have your own brand of fitness equipment. And most recently, you have launched a fitness clothing line called Erin Opria Basics. Did I leave anything out? Because that's a lot. I'd say my best accomplishment is I'm a mom. I'm yes. a dog mom. You're and a dog I was mom. in the Marines. We were just talking about, there we're you go. just out there talking now, about our dogs. Of, I've done lots of fun things yes. in my career, but those are my most proud things. I love that because I was just telling you, I was doing another podcast and we were talking about the definition of success. And when you ask someone if they feel like they're successful and it depends on what you measure success on. So I love that you say it's family, dogs, and the rest is icing. I mean, I don't think dogs come under dog under family. I mean, they're <laughs> the do- they're, the dogs they're, are first. they're I mean, no, I can't say that out loud. Right. Just kidding, just kidding. I say I'd put them equal. My dogs feel just as much as my kids as my kids feel like my kids. Yes. And like, I think I the rest love- of the family feels that way too. Right. Yeah. Um do but- you like being referred to as a celebrity trainer? I always wonder that. Or are you kind of like, I don't really eh. even think about it. whatever. I'm a trainer. I love fitness. I love helping people feel their best. Whatever you want to refer to me as, I don't really care. Can you name drop some of your clients? We might know. Some clients I've worked with. So I trained Carrie Underwood for 11 years, Kelsey yes. Ballerini, Mara Morris, Martina McBride, Leanne Womack, Lauren Elena. I mean, lots. Love. So, but I get to do it. I just love training good people. That's yes. the answer. Yes, I've worked with a lot of celebrities. But I love just working with good people that want to feel their best. And I'm going to help as many people as I possibly can. I don't care what size they are. Like, I don't care if they're walking red carpets or if they just want to feel the best to go out on a date night. Or they just want to look on the mirror and put on their dress and be like, damn, I look hot. That's all I want. So I don't care who you are. I just want everyone to feel their best. Okay. Did you always know or when did you know you wanted to be a personal trainer? Oh, I've been a personal trainer. I got certified at 18. So I've been training. I'm 45 now. I've basically been training my whole life, but I did do nine years in the Marine Corps. So that was like the gap of training. So I always knew I wanted to be a trainer. So I got out of the Marine Corps. I said, man, all I want to do is be a trainer. And I couldn't, I was a single mom at the time. I was like, I can't afford it. You know, you don't make any money. Mm -hmm. Like right now, training is a different, like back when I was just got out of the Marine Corps, Training wasn't cool. It was like, right. are you really going to get a real job? Like, right. Let's go. Come on. Yeah. How are you going to support you? What yourself? are you really going to do? Mm-hmm. And I was like, no, I'm always going to train. Watch this. And that was my motto. I will always train. But then I really couldn't support my kids. And so I was like, I'm going to start a house cleaning business while I grow my training business. Never did I think I want to train celebrities. All I wanted to do was support my kids training. Celebrities never once crossed my mind. Right. And um, so I would, I started a house cleaning business. I'd clean houses. I'd train early. I got up at 3.30. I would train early in the morning and then clean houses till the kids got out of school. And then as my training business grew, I would drop a house and drop a house. And eventually I was able to support myself. And so that was slow and steady wins the race. Just like that. Just like that. People think it's overnight. It's definitely not overnight. I've been doing it. I mean, for eternity, training, fitness, fitness in the Marine Corps. I mean, all I've ever done is fitness and I love it, but I love more than just fitness too. So you, we just breezed right over it. You said it and I was like, wait, what? The Marine Corps. Can you tell us, I mean, what age, or first of all, and also I asked you about how'd you get into celebrity training or personal training, but how did you 
what what made you wake up and say, I'm going to join the Marine Corps? How old were you? So I was 20. Okay. So it was 97. Okay. 97. I was 20 and I was like, I'd never thought about the military day in my life. I was like, why would you do that? And then G.I. Jane, I'm like, I'm going to be G.I.J. Watch this guy from the movie. Yeah. Like literally <laughs> my own. I've never had an idol in life except for the character. I, I'm sure Demi Moore is amazing, but the character G.I. Jane, the character is my idol in life. So you watched that movie and thought, I'm going to join the Marine Corps. See, I also watched that movie, but it had the exact opposite effect on me. I oh. think that there's two different people. Like really? I, I mean, I was amazed, but I just thought I could never do this. Oh, I thought what a it's fun a little special... game. <laughs> Did it turn out to be like you thought? Was it like was it like the movie? No. 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 But was it amazing? Absolutely. I would have stayed in. And my whole plan was to retire, actually, in the Marine Corps. But I was going to lose custody of my children because I was going to deploy for a third time. So how old were your kids when you first so went? So when I went overseas, I went to Iraq. They were getting written. The youngest one was getting ready to turn one. And oh. the oldest one was getting ready to turn three. So it was a month before each other. Two months before one birthday and a month before the other. Okay. And then I left for a year. I came home for six months and then I left for another year. And they were, so they were really young. What is, times. what is that re-entry like back from it's, it's, war life to mom life? It's called a lot of counseling. That's yeah. what it's called. It really is. Like I went through some massive counseling because I really, my head was in not in the right. You can't. And were people really even talking about it that much back then about the effects of no. war? no. And actually, I got bashed a lot for being a mother and leaving my children. I was like, well, how about all the guys that just yeah. left their children? <laughs> like, mm-hmm. It was devil standards. I feel like it's changed now. I, I Yeah. I feel like the military in general has changed to, I mean, the Marine Corps is still not a lot of women. Pro- I, will it ever be? I don't know. Maybe one day. Yeah. But, I mean, there's very few women in my unit. There's only two. So you came back after the second tour and realized you would lose. So when did you get divorced? After the second tour. After the second tour. Okay. So he cheated on me while I was on. That's amazing. Well, so, I wasn't really, I mean, it's not like, oh my God, he cheated on me. I was like, oh, thank you, Lord, I get out. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it was a blessing. Like, yes. Okay. I, I'd never, it, it was a miserable marriage that okay. I stayed in for the kids, which was a mistake that I, looking back, at, I should have divorced years ago. And I always said, I, I don't want to be a statistic. I'm going to make it. I'm going to mm-hmm. push through this. I'm going to make it. I was like, but if you ever cheats on me, I'm out. And so when you cheated on me, I was like, filed for divorce the next day. And that was end. So you came back from the second tour and found that out. Mm -hmm. And then you thought I might go back, but I'll lose custody of my kids. Oh, well, I knew I was going back. And then my attorney's like, well, you have two choices. What do you want to do? Because I had full, basically full custody. And so he said, you have two choices. Do you want, do you want to keep sole custody or do you want to share it? And I was like, I don't want to share it. Yeah. I'm picking my kids. It was... It was a no brainer decision, but the hardest decision because that was my career. I was like, I love the military. I loved it so much. And so I, it broke my heart, but I also knew it was the right thing. Like there was no question. It was the right decision. Now there's still days I look back. I'm like, I could still join. I mean, I know I'm 45. Will they take me? I'm a little broke, but I'll still play. Would they? I don't even know. Can you still join? Oh, I'm way too old. Okay. But it doesn't mean I wouldn't try. Right. Like I've talked to my husband now. I'm like, I, I really want to go back in. You know what's really cool is this summer I get to do a, a reunion of all the guys that I deployed with. Oh, where do you with, do that? This one's going to be in Kentucky, and I'm really excited. I haven't seen all those guys in wow. forever, like 05. That's amazing. So that's going to be really fun. Did your boys ever have any aspirations to go? No, no. I tried. <laughs> Lord, I tried. Did you really? Yes. I was like, please, just one of you go. Wow. They're like, Mom, I don't want to die. I was yeah. like, I'm gonna die. You're fine. You can do it. And yeah, because Muslims not. are like, no, don't do and it. You're like, like, you'll be fine. You'll be I was fine. Like, you're fine. I promise you're fine. I, I honestly think it's a great yeah. experience that a lot of people should do. Do you think it really helped you with what you do today? No question. The military yeah. has 100% made me the person I am. It's helped me with structure, discipline, um, my type A personality, everything. I, I really feel like the military is a core of who I am. That's amazing. And I would never, ever take back any of those days. Now, I'm not saying the military is like, all rainbows and butterflies. I mean, that's the furthest thing from the right core. There's a lot of BS. And being, I mean, I can imagine being a woman and it probably elevated. You want to know what the nickname was for us back? In, you, this is different nowadays okay. because they can't it's not say politically, it now. they yeah. can't say it now. So they'd call it WMs, which supposed they say yes. stood for women Marines, but they walking mattress. 
<laughs> they would They're never say that, that now. now. No, no, that's not you can't it. get yes. away with that now. Wow. But it's, and you just were just supposed to I, just take it, walk along, and listen. um, I think the answer is prove yourself. Yeah, I worked my ass off to prove myself that I I could do what they could do. Now, are we exactly equal? No, because I'm not as strong. I'm not, but I was strong enough to hold my own. And I continuously on every fitness test, I proved myself. I'd get perfect score. Look, I can do it too. I can do it. And that's where I think that we struggle sometimes is that we, yes, it's not always equal, but just work hard, work hard. Life isn't always equal and life isn't always fair. And you have to, if you want it bad enough, you'll work hard enough for it. And Amen. that's what I, that's what I did. I, I worked my butt off and I worked and I did really well in the Marine Corps. Well, that's amazing. So. Wow. That's very like inspirational. And I think too, as a mom, probably for the boys, probably growing up, we're like, my know. mom is a badass. I don't know. I, they're you probably don't think like, they mom, did? you're so embarrassing. I, no, I, I don't even they think. They were probably bragging on you. I'm sure to all their friends. I don't know. I don't know what they, I don't know. I, I'm at the, mm, mm, I'm not shy. Yes. So some no, of you're thing. not. Yes. If, so, if, so, like we go, they'll go to the club with, I like to go to the club still. You I mean, do. I mean, I yes. might be 45 years old, but yeah. I still love booty dancing. <laughs> like I like like straight up booty twerking. I all have of seen it. you at uh, the just, uh, Justin Timberlake's. Right now we're going 1230 club. Yes. So I follow my DJ. So wherever he goes is where I go. That's so that's amazing. where he's at right now. But we like to go. I call it the blue haired special time because we go from <laughs> four to six and then. Aaron goes home. It's it's getting dark. It's time to go home. I like that time too. It's yes. so much fun. It's so much is, fun. Is there anyone else there or is it just you guys? No, there's always people there. Is there anyone on the dance floor? Not normally. Right. <laughs> so you have it you, all to yourself. And everyone's like, oh my gosh, you get hammered so early. I was like, hammered? Hammered. I no. usually have had nothing. <laughs> That's the sad part. So sometimes my kids will go with me because they're both over 21. Yeah. And uh, I'll try to dance on them and they're like, oh my God. I'll make here we go again. <laughs> well, I, I think secretly they all like it, even if they won't admit it. Um, okay, I want to read something that you wrote in your book, and we'll talk about your books, but it really kind of stuck out to me in the Power Plate Diet book. You said, uh, you were speaking about your father, and you said, his death propelled me into a whole new direction to transform people's lives, not only with exercise, but also with food. Can you tell us a little bit about that? that? is 100%. That was a changing for everything with me and nutrition because I'd always been tall and really thin. I was really thin younger. Okay. And I never thought about nutrition. I could eat whatever I wanted. I worked out. I played soccer. I mean, soccer's always been my world. And I never worried about it. And neither did he. He was 6'5 and 180 pounds. Like he was thin. He was a big athlete. He did 150 mile bike rides and he died of a massive heart attack at my going away. I was leaving for Iraq the next day and he died at my going away party. For the second tour? Mm-hmm. So he died, like they, my parents threw a big party for me before I was leaving and he died playing sand volleyball with us at their house. And they gave me 10 days of emergency leave and I left for a year. And that was, I was like, wait, just because you're thin doesn't mean that your organs are loving you. Mm-hmm. And so that was my changing to say, eating matters. It's so much more than looks. And it changed everything for me. Was he not the best eater in terms of food choices? Yeah. Could have been better. Typical typical guy. He didn't have to worry about it, you know? (laughs) Right. I wouldn't say he was, it wasn't like he went out to fast food every day, but I wouldn't say, you know, he enjoyed like lasagna. He did home, a lot of home cooking, Mm -hmm. but it was like lasagna, things like that. So it wasn't like he ate fried food every day. He just didn't eat healthy. Gotcha. Well, I love because it, it's when I read that, I thought it must be great to feel like a lot of the stuff you do when you're you're helping people and you're doing all this stuff, but also almost in his memory, almost in a way to kind of celebrate oh, yeah. him. My dad was my best friend. That's awesome. So, and I always say, I bet he's watching me right mm-hmm. now. I always say that. And so proud of you. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah. I mean, looks down. I always, you know, I'm like, what do you think, dad? You think I should do this? Like when I was doing my clothing, I was like, mm-hmm. what, what do you think, dad? You think I got this one? Do you have a sign from him that you no, feel? No, I you wish just, I did. You just do I it. I wish I did, uh, but I don't. Sometimes I'm like, people say, oh, it's like a red bird or it's a this. And <laughs> I don't know. I, then I'm, they always think, but what if I didn't have that sign? I would just. I think my sign is something opens up. You know, mm-hmm. like there's a path that I love happens. That. Yeah. There's like, it opens up and it's set and it tells me this is the right. You know, yeah. you've been waiting for the right decision and the right answer. And something has told you. That you, that's seem, it. you seem to be on the right track. 
from where I'm. Well, from I mean, I I'm don't from. know. I just like to play in a lot of different things. Yeah. I like, I love to have fun and I don't want a stale life where I look back and think, hmm, well, that got old next. You know, like right. that. And that's all I did. Mm-hmm. I want to do anything that I enjoy. I want to do. Like, I don't want to pigeonhole myself into I'm only fitness or I'm only nutrition or I'm only this. No, I'm a lot of things. I love a lot of things and I want to do all of them. Well, and that's, that's, and I have, I have, um, nothing that holds me back. You, uh, have two books. Number one, the, or the one I just read was the power plate diet. And the first one was the four by four. Did you read that one first? I, so I actually didn't even realize that I bought the four by four diet and it has been in my, I'm going to say this embarrassingly. I did, which is probably what a lot of people fall into the trap, bought it. When did it come out? I don't know. Like years ago. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So I was going to say about it years ago. Six, seven, eight. So I I maybe bought it three, four years ago. I read it with the best of intentions and probably used it for a little while. But I do still think, like I follow what the whole kind of guidelines were for that. The philosophy behind it. And then when I got the Power Plate book, the one thing I love about your books is I feel like like if I'm the consumer, there is so much out there and we are so inundated with information and your books are both so specific in terms of what to eat, what not to eat, how to go to the grocery store, recipes. It's so late. You can't, it's pretty fail proof if you were to follow it, but it's also not restricting. It's, I don't need to go to Whole Foods and bank my like bank account on all these ingredients. I don't have and can't pronounce, which just seems like a lot of the diets. And I know you probably hate that word. I don't know what, what's a better so word, the word than diet. My, my books both have diets in it, but I didn't, I fought that tooth and nail and I lost obviously because it's on my book. You didn't have a choice. No, yeah. my publisher's like no choice here. There what you go. do you like to call lifestyle. it? Lifestyle. A lifestyle. I like mm-hmm. that. Okay. I like lifestyle. So we do all of our grocery shopping at mostly Walmart and Costco, sometimes Publix because they have the best hummus. But for the most part, that's where sometimes Kroger, but the majority of our grocery shopping is Walmart and Costco. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be fancy. My, my books, um, and I don't tell you what not to eat. I tell you what to eat in smaller portions. Yes. It's all about learning to live a healthy, balanced lifestyle. You know, do these things as a majority time, but yet enjoy that tequila on occasion. Not daily. (laughs) You don't have to be a hero and rescue the whole bottle of wine when you open it. (laughs) Have a glass, cork it, it'll still be there. I know. You Uh, think it's your best friend. It really isn't. I promise you. So one of the things you are a big proponent of, and I just ordered these for my whole family, and I actually used your code, so thank you, uh, was the food sensitivity test. Oh, have you gotten your results? Well, no, we haven't even got it yet. I ordered them like four days ago. For everybody? Yes. I'm a little bit worried that I said to my husband, I go, oh my gosh, I just thought of something. He said, what I said, what if I have a sensitivity to red wine? You know and what's he goes funny? That, he's like, what would you do? I said, I, I don't know. I don't know. Be I'd God telling t- you something. So listen to this. Switch My to mom did hers. And she's like, ah, I don't have anything on mine that I eat. And I was like, really? Tell me what you on your <laughs> grapes, <laughs> chocolate, oh, and this- raspberries. And I said, mom, you have red wine almost every night. Yeah. And she would eat. it's good for your heart, And though. she would eat. Right. I mean, <laughs> it's what I keep telling myself. Don't let's let's stop telling ourselves okay. that. Let's just say alcohol is not good for you. Having it occasionally mm-hmm. is fine, but nightly it should not be happening. What? But she, when she finally cut it out, her wrist instantly got smaller. It was insane. Like she felt so much better. Now that everyone's gonna be different how how, right. how it affects their body, but for her, the, her swelling just went down. But she had a sensitivity that came up with grapes. Grapes. So if I grapes. don't have a sensitivity to grapes. You still shouldn't drink it every day. There's nothing. What's, like, in, what's moderate? When you say moderation. Two what drinks is? a week. A week. Okay. You're like, you, did you mean nightly? <laughs> no, I didn't. I mean, yeah. Yeah. It was like two drinks a night. Perfect. I'm killing it. Mm. No, I don't have two drinks a night. Almost. Um, <laughs> not most nights. <laughs> okay. So not most nights. All right. In the book, a lot of the things that I love is that you don't just tell us why we should or shouldn't do something, but you tell us why, which I think is a really big reason people either stick with something or they don't. So if I know why alcohol 
is bad for me. I might be more prone not to have it every night. Can you tell me Did why? you know that when you drink alcohol, it can shut your fat burning system down for up to 72 hours? Now, some people are different. It all depends on how much you drink and okay. how your body processes yes. it. But it can be up to 72 hours. Okay. So see, that's good for me to know. Because that, that's what I'm saying. That Something like that will make me think I want my body to be burning fat for 72 hours. So As opposed to trying to metabolize that alcohol? Yes. It'd be way better. Okay. And not only that, you will feel better. I mean, alcohol is an, is an inflammatory. It, you, it will inflame your body. I mean, it makes our head go a little weird for right. a reason. I mean, eating a grape doesn't do that, right? So why does alcohol do that? It's right. not good for you. It's not good for you. Okay. Now, am I saying that you should never have alcohol? Absolutely not. I mean, I love tequila. Yes, tequila, you're a tequila drinker. But straight? I, straight. Straight tequila. Straight. No okay. mixer. If I mix it with sweet, I get a headache. I don't, actually, I don't do any sweets, okay. really. Sweets are kind of out for me. Um, but I just drink it straight on the rocks with one lemon, one lime. Happy, happy area. Wow. Now, it has to be good tequila, though. Right. Like, if you're yeah. going to have it, you're going to have the good. So what's your I'm, favorite? What's your go-to brand? One. And it sounds snooty, and I will spend a lot of money on it, but I don't drink enough that it matters. You okay. know what I mean? Yes. What's your favorite? Class Azul is all I drink. On the rocks, okay. one lemon, one lime, and I only go to restaurants that have it. Oh, all right. I don't know if I've ever had that one. At least I... you had the blue and white bottle with the bell on top. Okay. Wait, have you really not had it? I don't know. If you haven't, then you need to be introduced to I it. I need to try it. Well, you're, I, I, I already know the answer, but I'm going to always tell you, well, I'm going to tell you that I always have to kill it in the form of a margarita, margarita. which yeah, I know you and you're else. like, oh, you're internally, I mean, I try to have it with like soda water or like agave. Agave, yeah. But <laughs> you're like, mm-hmm. still no, still no. Still no. And a good thing when you are drinking, if you mix water, like if you have your drink and then you have a glass, a full, like maybe even a 20 ounce bottle or at Mm -hmm. least an eight ounce glass of water, it will one, slow you down your drinking. And it will also help you not have a hangover because a lot of hangovers come from dehydration and sugar. So mix your water in there too. Can you talk a little bit about what's in the Power Plate diet book about inflammatory foods? Because I don't know if this is a new thing or we're just now talking about it more. So there's a lot of foods that are inflammatory and also everybody's body is different. So what inflames your body and what inflames my body can be two totally different things. That's why I recommend everyone taking a test to find out. You can go to your doctor and take one. There's ones that you can order online. Either way, I recommend everybody finding out what inflames their body. Did you, what did you, did you find out? Yeast, potatoes, and onions. Were you so eating you, a lot of that prior? Uh, onions, a ton. Like okay. we had, we always kept sauteed vegetables um, in the fridge. And every night we put, we at the time we were doing grilled chicken, sauteed vegetables for dinner every single night. And I farted up a storm. It was like, <laughs> we played Dutch oven every night and I won <laughs> every night in our house. Because of the onions. Oh, it was the onions. And I was like, what <laughs> makes me so gassy? Like, and it was, it was healthy. I wasn't eating. There's was no oils. There's no nothing on them. And it so was it doesn't onion. need to be a bad food in order for you to no, be sensitive like, uh, to it. My son's girlfriend just took hers and she, that poor girl, she's got everything on it. Everything that she loves, bananas, mm. um, garlic. Garlic's a hard one because it's in everything. everything. You basically can't go out to eat because it's in everything. Everything. And so every time she goes out to eat, she instant, she's really thin too. And so she's like, I mean, she gets super bloated. So if you have a sensitivity to something, a food, should you never have it or can you have it in moderation? Well, you just need to know what's going to happen. When you'll you do have it. You're going to you're going to feel bloated. you're going to feel it when you have it. If your body's sensitive to it. So if we're feeling like we're eating a meal, like what's the difference between feeling we just ate too much and we're bloated versus I'm having a sensitive reaction to something? Because if you just drink a small smoothie and your stomach's bloated, then there's something that's not agreeing with your system. Mm, okay. Or I mean, if you just go out and eat a big cheeseburger and fries and you're bloated, well, you it's just probably cheeseburger, from the cheeseburger and fries. And fries. Okay. Or it could be like for me, if I eat a cheeseburger and fries, I have the yeast on mine, which is the bun. I have the fries, which is potatoes. So like for me, it would be that. Even if I didn't eat a big portion of it, I will instantly. So they do different things. Like yeast to me. I'm really, when I have that, I almost feel like I have the flu. Like my, instantly my fingers start to ache. That's mm-hmm. the first sign. And then I almost get like a real slight headache and I just feel all my joints. You always had that and didn't know why? I thought it was gluten for years. Okay. I thought it was gluten. It's, hmm. And then when I took the test, I found out it was yeast. What is, 
Can you tell everybody a little bit of like the actual process of what is happening to our body when like it's reacting to a food? Like what what's actually happening in our body that makes us inflamed? It's the, it's the inflammation that you don't see. You know, like you see like acute, like you hit your knee and your knee swells up. It's a different kind of inflammation. It's inflammation inside that you don't see. Okay. And is it always in our, I mean, I know you just said that can be in your fingers and stuff, but like that stomach. Yeah. And there's good inflammation. There's bad inflammation. Like if you get injured, your body inflames. It's like attacking it. Right. That's good inflammation. But then the everyday inflammation, your body just staying inflamed is not great. Okay. So we all need to be and taking this And that's where test. a lot of diseases tend to come from is just staying in an inflamed state. Hmm. Are there certain foods that we're all sensitive to like sugar or something? I mean, sugar in general it's is just bad. Is, sugar. And now am I saying you should never have sugar? Yeah. I am all about balance. Like go enjoy whatever it is that you like, but just eat small portions of it. Like eat the majority of something healthy and then eat small portions of the goodies. So you are a proponent of moderation. 100%. Because I love everything. I mean, donuts are my weakness. Donuts are your weakness. Mm -hmm. Like every, every time we travel, we walk Wherever it is, we're going to walk to a donut store. It might be six to miles to donuts. get to, yeah, to try a local donut store. When you have uh, a client, celebrity client or a client, do you also do nutrition with them or is it mostly, it's like, do you do an eating plan with them? Yeah, but my, it's very basic. I want people to live a healthy, it balanced is, life. So I have read it and it is, is it, very, it's a it's basic surprisingly and it basic. works. Yes. And it's how I live my life every single day, how I have for years. I don't do, I don't do starches at night. Now people are like, oh, you don't do carbs. No, I do carbs because vegetables are a complex carb. So I'll eat all the vegetables I want. Um, but not at night. But you, No, at night I will. Okay, but not the carbs. Not the starchy carbs. Gotcha. So I don't do like potatoes, well, breads. I don't do that anyways because of my food sensitivity. But like potatoes, rice, quinoa, I don't do any of that at night. I do it earlier in the day. Um, I believe eating it earlier, burn it instead of storing it at night. Okay. Burn it, use it as an energy source. Burn it throughout the day. Can you give us like a little snapshot of what you would eat in a day? Yeah, it's the exact same thing every single day. Every day. Every day. Unless because I go you out, like it or you're just a creature of habit? I'm or... a creature of habit and I love it. Okay. And I'll and it change works. it about it every about every 10 years, I'll change it. Okay. So what give us a little snapshot. So in the morning is still be, cut oats. What should be eating? Still cut oats. Well, I mean, that's not what you should be eating. This is just if what- If we want to follow what you're eating. You, you don't even need to follow what I'm eating. Following the full philosophy doesn't mean you have to eat the exact same thing as me. Okay. Following my philosophy is don't eat starches at night, cut back on sugar, cut back on alcohol, watch your sodium intake. A lot of people don't realize how much sodium they're taking in in a day. So for me, I, in the morning, I always start, I have my water, I have my green juice, and then I go to um, coffee with collagen. I have half a protein bar. That's like, because I don't like to have coffee without something to Me eat. Me neither. I always have a protein I bar have, with my coffee. But I yes. only have half. And then I go to my steel cut oats okay. that I keep, I cook in the crock pot, just a big tub of whatever brand my husband happens to buy at the grocery store. I don't do grocery shopping. Um, and then I fry up egg whites in a separate skillet, throw them in there and cinnamon and berries. Egg whites in the steel cut oats. Yeah. But I chop them up. I cook them in huh. a skillet separate okay. and then I cut, stick Never them in my already together. cooked oatmeal. All right. And my oatmeal is with water, not with milk, because someone's going to ask, do you use milk? No, I don't. Right. I just am not a huge dairy person in general. Okay. Um, and then snack is usually a protein shake in the car because I'm training. With water, almond milk, water. milk? Water. Just water. Always. Okay. And usually I do chocolate protein powder with PB2. Yes. That's okay. kind of my go-to. Yeah. Shake it up, water. So the good thing about protein shakes is you can just keep them in your car all the time. So if you're a mom picking up your kids or whatever, just keep your protein, like just keep the protein powder and the PB2 in a shaker. And then you always have a bottle of water. So if you're hungry, then you don't drive through a drive through Just shake that nice. up real quick and chug a lug a lug. And there you go. Like it. You okay. get your protein in. So it's about 30 grams of protein and one shake. Yeah. Because I like to strive for my body weight. For me personally, I go for my body weight in, in protein. In protein. I thought you were going to say water. Okay. Well, yeah, that, about that too. Okay. Same. So in like protein. right around 125, in between 120 and 140 protein and basically water too. So that, okay. So ounces in protein with your body weight. And grams and, no, grams of protein. Grams of protein. Okay. And <laughs> ounces of water. <laughs> yeah, I was like, wait, 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 no, no, no. That something wrong there. a lot of protein. <laughs> Massive amount. Okay. And then dinner. Or do we haven't got oh. to lunch yet. We're not even at lunch yet. So I or is use, that your protein shake? I'll use a low, car low carb tortilla. So I'm, 
but usually I use a cut the carb. Right now I'm doing cut the carb, but there's also lots Where of Where do you get cut the carb? Online. Okay. I was like, oh, I haven't seen cut the carb. Oh, they're so good. Is it like a tortilla? They're kind of like a real thin, they're like a rectangle sheet and they're real thin and flimsy. Them? Yeah, serum on a skillet, just like you would a tortilla, like a okay. quesadilla. Cut the carb. And I put one piece of, people would say the grossest <laughs> cheese. It's so good. Pepper Jack, but it's like this, the one. Pepper Jack cheese. But it's the one that, I only like the one that's in the individual wrapper. Like, like a string cheese. No, oh. like the flat cheese. You're know, like old school. Uh, oh, like a cheese slice. Yeah. Like, like an orange, cheese, like yeah, a craft yeah, cheese slice. Go. Okay. Yes. But I only like the pepper jack. Like okay. That. Like the fancy pepper jack. I don't want that. You, okay. I actually don't like cheese. That's the weirdest I thing. I actually don't like cheese either. But I love that pepper jack on my eggs. And I do three. Well, I was, I was only doing two, but lately I've been doing three because why not? Uh, three whole eggs and three more egg whites. Okay. So I do six egg whites in the morning and then I save my whole eggs for in the afternoon. All right. On that. And it's delicious. Sometimes I saute mushrooms and throw them in there. Or you can put any vegetables in it. It's delicious. Okay. And then the, the tortilla gets nice and crispy. And then for snack, my husband, I'll go work out and I come in. He always has a buffet of vegetables laid out for us. He, keep, he keeps them sliced up. And so we do veggies and hummus. It's usually my snack. And there's a delicious hummus, a jalapeno hummus, jalapeno honey hummus at, at Publix. Publix. Jalapeno honey hummus. I need so to look for that. So good. Okay. And also, he just got these chips from, they're called W-I-L-D-E. Wild? Yeah. But with me. They're protein chips. They're good? They are really good. for good. you? They have 10 grams of protein for 20 chips. And they're made out of chicken breasts and egg whites. It's wow. It doesn't so, sound good, but I believe you. No, no, no. Good. They're good. And I'd like to dip them a little bit in the hummus too. And so those, um, they have like hot chicken. They have, I haven't tried the waffle one. I think there's like a waffle one yeah. or something. Um, sea salt, salt and vinegar. I didn't love the salt and vinegar, but the sea salt with the hummus is really good. And did I say buffalo? Nope. And buffalo. Okay. There might be other flavors. Those are so that's I know. the snack. They get them at, I get them at Costco or Amazon. I mean, this day does sound delicious to me already. I it's can, really, it's yeah. really easy. And then my dinner is the exact same every night. Half a pound of ground turkey. And no, everyone's going to ask, do you put seasoning? I do not season it. <laughs> you but, don't? It's not too bland? Ground turkey well, hey, I'm putting dressing on it. Oh, okay. You haven't got to the dressing. I, I mean, okay. you could, anyone, you, if you want to season it, yeah. feel free season it. Okay. I just, once I put dressing on, it's fine. Do you make your own dressing? No. Okay, good. I thought when I see, I'm like, oh, I don't want to make my own. I, just I want am the to laziest <laughs> cook you will ever find. My dinner okay, well, takes. What dressing are you using? I use a Panera bread poppy seed. Really? So I buy the uh, sweet kale mix. Yes. The big bag at Costco is my favorite. I feel one. like you're going to tell me you don't put all the good stuff. I don't put the in mixers. The in. I don't use any of the <laughs> okay. mixers, but I really like the mix of greens. Okay. And people are going to say it's wasteful. Oh. Hey, you do hey, you, you and do I, you. it yep. works for me. Yep. And. Um, and then I put half a pound of turkey on there and my dressing and walnuts and it's walnuts. delicious. And there also is low sugar cranberries if you want some. Okay. But I don't usually do that anymore. I used to, but I don't anymore. Do you do like intermittent fat? Did you stop no. eating between certain hours? No. No. Okay. I have never fasted a day in my okay. life. Oh, Actually, good. that's a lie. When I've had surgery, I had to fast and I was like, look, if this so surgery. That was a forced fasting. I said, if this surgery isn't early, I'm not doing it <laughs> Yeah, because I've, I've I would tried. die. This made me angry. Really Well, I go angry. from like a little hungry to like, I literally will throw up yeah. in a matter of seconds. Not eating is not an option for me. Yeah. So I I don't fast. And then at when I'm hungry late at night, my probably about four nights a week I get hungry after dinner. Um, I do another quarter pound of turkey with coconut aminos on it. Okay. I stick in the microwave. That's your bedtime snack. That's my nine o'clock, nine thirty snack time. What time do you go to bed usually? Well, I'm supposed to I tell myself to get in bed at nine o'clock. It doesn't always happen because I get up at four for work. Four, wow. Cause you just like to start your day that early or no, you're no, training work, someone, work. you're yeah. training someone. I get that up early. so I have time to eat, take care okay. of dogs, feed dogs, you know, all that. You train at your house or you travel to I them? I travel, I go to their house. Always to them. Yeah. Okay. Not occasionally in my house, but for the most part, their house. And then you'll work out yourself in the afternoon? Yeah. Okay. Afternoon, evening, depending on the day. And you always do jobs. great workouts that you film and put up on your Instagram. Yeah, I got and... something for everybody. Yeah. But on my Pretty Muscles app, I really have a program for everybody. I have from, if you've never worked out a day in your life, I have a strength. So my app is a strength training, home at home strength training program, which all women need to be doing weight training. You need to do your cardio. You need to get your steps in and you need to eat clean and hydrate those, and get your sleep. Those are like, if you do those things, it's not overwhelming. It's not over. I think you make it 
less overwhelming because there is so much information out there for people who are like, I think I'm going to try to go on a fitness journey. Where do I even start? What, what's your, is, what are your favorite exercises? Is it the very erotic? first thing you should do? Start walking. Start walking. Just get out and walk. Something everybody can do. It costs you no money. Um, and then movement helps break cravings. How often do you go for a walk and be like, damn, I really want that big fat cheeseburger. <laughs> you don't because it really like vitamin D just soaking up. It helps break cravings. Now, if you're on a walk to a hamburger joint, then you might be thinking about the hamburger. <laughs> but in general, when you go out and walk, you're less likely to sit and just have cravings. Okay. When it, do we have most of our cravings? When we watch TV and we have nothing else to do. Yeah. A lot I, of our cravings. I feel like it's around that five or six mm -hmm. o'clock hour that I just um, have done well all day. And then I just... Um, you and everybody else. That's a good yeah. time to get your dog and go out for a little walk. Okay. Is that like a blood sugar drop or something? No, it's just, it's more in, it's, it a it's, it's a routine. It's your you're happy. It's your mm. not happy. Your habit. It's true because if I'm out habit. about, it, I don't think about That's it. That's when a lot of people are like it's their glass of wine, their comfort zone. Like a glass of wine and a piece of chocolate. You know, we all have our habits late at night. Yeah, that are what makes us feel good. We feel like we have to have it. Yes. So I have my one bite of chocolate. I get these chocolate caramel squares at Costco. They're really Sanders. They're just regular chocolate. They're not like a low. They're nothing anything. healthy. Of, no, no, no. They're okay. terrible. That's and they're your covered, treat. Yeah. Well, they're a square, like a tiny square, but I make each square last three days. Mm. So I get one bite of that square and it's very satisfying. I have that one bite, put it away and walk away. Okay. And I mean, I'm probably know the answer, but does all that willpower, do you think come from all your time in the Marines? I would say a big chunk of it does. But it could have gone away by now. I mean, you have could to have, have kept it up. I have a up. very strong head. I'm very headstrong. When I decide I want to do something, I will do it. If I said, you know what? You're not having you're not having that today. You've decided, you told yourself you're not going to have that. I do that with alcohol. Like I go to I go to a lot of events and everything's like open bars. Have a drink, mm -hmm. have a drink. And I'm like, I'm good. So I pick and choose. It's not that I don't want to have a drink. I mean, of course you I want to have choose. I would love to have a drink tequila every night. Right. That would be so much fun. It's not worth it to me. So I pick and choose. I'm like, you know what? I don't need it tonight. Let's save it for X, Y, Z. So I plan out, okay, my drinking day this week is this day. Or if I want to drink two days in the week, then I plan those out. So I plan. One of the things I wanted to ask you was, should we be, are you meal prep a lot? I don't I meal prep anything. Oh, you don't? But no. Don't, don't wanna, I'll see you like on a Sunday cooking like turkey and stuff. I, mean, I don't yeah. know if it's meal prep, but it's I don't know stuff if you for call further. That, I don't know if you call that meal prepping. I cook three pounds of turkey or my husband cooks it while I'm in the gym. I think that's I mean, meal. It takes, I, call it takes it, five, I call that it, meal prep. It takes 10 <laughs> minutes and that's all I prep. That and I throw some oatmeal in a crock pot and that's literally it. It My meal prep is a consistent of 10 minutes in a week. So well, I don't Well, and know. I guess when you know what you're eating every day, you don't need to There's do a lot no of meal prepping. There's no thought process. Yeah. Like I it's just easy. get up, I know what I'm going to eat. There, it's, it, and I like to eat at the exact same time. I'm probably more structured than most people would ever want to be, yeah. but it works for but me. But it works for you. It's I've done it all my adult life. I've been that way. I love structure. Is your, I'm curious. So we see your husband on your Instagram a lot, which I love because you guys seem to have a very just fun, easygoing. He's my best just friend. chill relationship. So I think most people love seeing him on there. I'm curious, is he as strong-willed and have all this willpower and eat the same no. work? No, he does not. At all? A little bit? No, not at all. Oh. I mean, he, no, he, it's not the same as mine, but he does have a lot of it. He eats, he eats pretty clean. We eat a lot of the same stuff. Actually, our snacks are the same. He might just eat more of it. Like he might snack like in the office when he does computer work, he'll snack on nuts and stuff like that. He'll snack on snacks and occasionally beef jerky and things like that. We eat basically the same dinner. Sometimes he changes up his salad dressings or he changes up the mix of greens that he buys. He doesn't usually use the packets that come with it either. Okay. He mixes his own. He'll get like different dressings, but healthier dressings. And usually it's turkey. But Costco has this great steak that's already sliced and cooked. You just cook in a sk skillet for like yeah. two minutes. And a lot of times he'll put that on a salad. That's easy. Yeah. Just easy. And I'll sometimes I'll eat that for my late night snack. Okay. Like instead of turkey. Once a week I do red beef. You just said clean eating. Can you tell us all? Because I think we all hear that word. What is clean eating complicated? Like what is clean eating? If I say I'm going to eat clean, what does that mean? I mean, I just take soap and water and wash it really good and then it's clean. <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. She's the vegetable one. Uh, yeah. Um, clean eating 
to me, it's just taken away out as much processed foods Process. as you process, like possibly in can. a bag, chips. Anything processed is yeah. pretty much not clean. Okay. If it's, yeah, if it's it. ready to warm up, it's probably not clean unless you prepped it. Right. Okay. All right. Um, am I saying that it needs to all be processed? I mean, those chips that I love that are protein chips, those are not clean, but do I love them? Yep. And I'm going to have them in moderation. I'm in not going to sit and eat the whole bag. Usually a serving is 20 chips that I usually probably have at most 10. I love that. Um, Sometimes two and then just walk away. When we were talking about uh, just asking you about what your husband eats, if he works out, if he has that same kind of love for fitness, what do you say to a woman who says, I'm trying to lose weight, I'm trying to exercise, but my husband mm-hmm. is not no, on board and he's like, let's order that pizza, which I think probably does happen because if he's not losing weight, he doesn't want you to lose weight or it's a, a mother or a sister who's not supportive and, and it might be that he doesn't need to lose weight or, you know, some, some guys aren't trying to lose weight and they're very happy with where they are. They're just stay at a good size. And some guys can just eat whatever they mm-hmm. want. Um, the answer is you have to make your own decisions for yourself. You can't rely on somebody else to make decisions for you. So if they want to order the pizza, I'm not saying you can't enjoy some of the pizza. The answer is you eat your meal first. And then when the pizza gets there, you have a small portion. So you're not hungry. For me, like when I go out to eat, before I go out to eat, I mm-hmm. like to drink a protein shake before I go. So then when I go, I don't need to overindulge. You're not then. starving. No, I don't love, I don't go out to eat hungry. That's actually my rule of thumb. I'll go out to eat like, okay, I'll eat, but I'm not starving. Um, but I'll eat smaller portions of, I'll eat, I'll still eat a full meal. Okay. I'll just order. I'm not tempted to order all the junk because I'm not starving. It's you make your worst decisions when you're starving. I don't really let myself get starving anymore. Because you're always got something. I'm all, yeah, I'll drink, I'll, I'll do something. I, I don't like to be hungry. Actually, I just it's probably my least favorite time of day is it's if I get hungry. Terrible feeling. And it's really the least favorite time of day for my husband to be around me if yeah. I'm hungry. Because <laughs> I am. Angry. There it that's is. an understatement. <laughs> Aaron will go ballistic. He's like, here, shovel it in, Aaron. <laughs> Crazy you said, wait, woman. How did you say you were? Huh? How old did you, you said you were? What? 45. 45. Okay. So you're a little bit younger than me. Have you found in the past, I don't know, since you've turned 40, is it harder to stay like on track with eating or exercising? Are things you don't look remotely like it's affecting you mm-hmm. at all? <laughs> you know I'm what? asking for the rest of us. Is it harder for me to stay on track? No, it's not harder for me to stay on track. Um, what would I say is harder? Is it harder to lean? It gets harder to lean down. Absolutely. But I went on this journey last year. So after all, I had all those knee surgeries in 20, what year are we in? We're in 23. Yeah. So in 21, <laughs> I had two, which is my fourth knee surgery, all on my left knee. So I've had four total, but I had two of them in 21, June, July, beginning of July, and then like September, October. Mm-hmm. And so basically for one year, I was, did no cardio. All I did was strength training. And so that summer, was I big? No, but I was at my, my biggest in 2022 that I'd ever been. I was like, is this menopause? And I was like, no, Aaron, you haven't done cardio in a year. Mm. I had done strength training. So basically you would say I'm on a bulking phase. Never thought of it that way. I just literally couldn't do right. cardio. And so I didn't do any cardio. I just did strength training six days a week. And then I was like, huh. It's go time. And it really happened as my son came to me and said, hey, you want to run a half marathon with me? I was like, I can't run. Doctor said I can never run again. And then I hung up the phone. And I said, oh, man, I just said I can't run. <laughs> Which I was are your like, fighting words? <laughs> I was like, well, that's BS. So I got on the, I literally got off the phone and got on the treadmill. And I was like, let's see if I can do it. And so I ran. I was like, I'm going to run three-fourths of a mile and just see if it hurts. I did. I got off the treadmill. I was like, it doesn't hurt. I called my PT. I was like, I did it. And then he's like, you can't, don't run. And I was like, okay. And then I... I'd started running every other day. And then once I was like, I got that taste. Cause I used to run marathons. I've always mm-hmm. been a soccer player I mean, running. I was Marine Corps, you know, running's always been a part of my life. And I was like, how can I? And I was like, if I can get to seven miles, then I know I can run the half. Yeah. And then, so probably about two weeks into it, doing it every other day, very slow, started out very slow. This was last week of June in 2022. Been exactly a year since I had done any cardio basically. And four knee surgeries later. Yeah, yeah. yeah. (laughs) And and I said, well, man, if I can do this, I'm going to run the half with him. And I was like, you know what? This is a perfect time for me to make some changes. 
and lean back out to where I used to be. Let's see. And my whole goal was, can I get my abs back to where I was in 2015? Going Because I've been going through perimenopause since I was 37. I was like, can I do it? Going through perimenopause and being 45 years old. Like, yeah. can I go, get back? And on my knees, can I get back? And I did. You did? Well, yeah, yeah I you did. did. I, I worked really hard, though. And I ran the half marathon. You, what, so when did you run the half marathon? October, last year. Oh. Yeah, I went you. to running like six to 10 miles a day. With your son? No, we weren't running actually together. Okay. We ran the half. Yeah. Me, him, and um, sh- my husband, Sean, yeah. all ran the half together, together in New York. But you all trained together? Well, not daily. No, we actually didn't do any of the training together. But you didn't? You just knew you were doing going to do it? We're, we knew we were all going to go run it together, go on vacation and run the half together. Do you think people can learn motivation and willpower like absolutely if, if someone's like oh yeah but she's always been like this or she was in the marines i've never been like that because yeah. it's something you can just you got to want you know what the answer is mm-hmm. you have to want it if you want something bad enough you'll do it mm-hmm. if you don't want it bad enough you're going to find an excuse so the answer is you don't truly want it if you're not willing to change what's the biggest excuse you hear from people gosh there's everything excuse like <laughs> assholes us, everyone's men, got give, one <laughs> give us give us your top favorites i'm too tired is a probably the biggest excuse. I don't have any energy. Movement gives you energy. Do I, am I every day, do I wake up and be like, I can't wait to work out? Yeah. No, absolutely not. But you know what I do is I get out there and I, it, if I'm like, gosh, I can't do it today. Sometimes I go in my gym, I just lay on the floor. I'm like, I have no motivation. And then I get on my treadmill and I start walking and I'm like, okay, now I'm ready to rock. Movement will give you energy. So I'm like, if you cannot energize yourself to go do it, just take your dog or your kid out, Go outside, get some vitamin D, walk, and you'll realize you have more energy. And just do something. Do something. Each baby steps. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Goes a long way. And that little bit adds up and it adds up and then a little bit more and then a little bit more. And then before you know it, you feel amazing. Like my pretty mouse app for only 30 minute workouts at home from super beginner to advance. So your pretty four, muscles pretty, app is, sorry to interrupt, your pretty muscles app is, is it Tabata? Is that what that kind of exercise is called? No, or no? I mean, it's, Tabatas are mixed in. Tabatas are awesome, but they're what, mixed what in. Is a, I don't even so know what a Tabata, Tabata is. is a four minute workout. Okay. 20 second burst of exercise followed by 10 seconds of rest for eight rounds. And it has a timer. I'll tell you when to go and rest. But, and it can be mixed with anything. It could be squats. It could be squat and jumps. But again, I have it for, if you're a super beginner, we don't put Tabatas in there. We learn basic, I teach you the basic form and of how to do everything. And then we slowly build up. And then I have, so it's what's called Kickstarters of Beginner. Okay. So and you then, pick your level when you start. You pick your level. Okay. And you can switch back and forth as much as you want. So I have Kickstarter and then I have Kickstarter too. And then I have my signature program and my goal on that. And then in the signature program, I have modifications. So if you don't want to do any jumping, you know, you can do the whole thing low impact. And then for my goal is for people to start picking up heavier weights, start mm-hmm. lighter, master your form, and then up your weights, Okay, up your weights, the, but stay with the reps I suggest. And then I have an advanced program. And those are 30 minutes, about 30 minutes. All depends on, I mean, if you sit, if you lay on the floor for 10 right. minutes of the, in the middle of it, it might take you longer, <laughs> but, um, so yeah, I, it's just drop the excuses to find the results. That's the answer. Drop the excuses to find the results. But I think we need that all like on a, we, you need that on a t-shirt. We do need that on a that t-shirt. That needs to be, yes. Or maybe written inside the cabinets. Yeah. <laughs> the fridge. Hang a little sign in there when you go to eat your donuts. Be like, hello, yes. excuses. Yes. Okay. The excuse of tomorrow. Yes. Tomorrow. Or like one of those frigid, like it talks to you. It gives that you like a- That would not be amazing. Just your voice, a motivational mm. quote. Hello, yeah. let's go. <laughs> You'd be like, shut up, Aaron. Yeah, you could just put, yeah. Your husband would be like, oh, there mm, she is again dead. talking to me. He doesn't care. No more care. sausage. <laughs> no, but he does eat healthy. I, I did say he does eat healthy and he does work out. That's um, good. That's yeah. A, that's good. He's a trainer too. Oh, he is? Okay. Yeah. He works that. for me. So my oldest son's a trainer too. All right. That we all work together. And then my younger son plays soccer. And so the fitness is soccer. all- in our family. It's all in the family. Yeah. I love that. Do you have any aspirations to, I don't know, start a gym? No. <laughs> I have aspirations <laughs> to start. Absolutely not. <laughs> I have aspirations to start a home decorating line. Oh, okay. That's my next. So That's the gonna clothing be next... line Okay, is... let's talk about your clothing line because it's beautiful. Thank you. Beautiful. This it's is so a shiny dream come true. Like I thought this is one of those things where you're like, it will never happen, but I'll daydream about it. I mean- the clothing For, line. Yeah. Okay. Well, probably been 12 years of oh. it. And I was like, it's never going to happen, but I'm just going to sit. I'm going to live vicariously through all these other clothing yeah. lines. And I just, and I buy everything and try them on. I'm like, oh, I love this and this. And then I have the best designer out of Chicago. Her name's Carrie. And she's 
amazing. And so for our first pair of leggings, the shine leggings, it took us almost right out a year to get the pattern exactly how I want it. We have a manufacturer in Houston that makes them for me. Okay. And I think we ended up doing seven different trial runs from here. Like, this is it. Finally nailed my pattern. I love it. So I have so many fun colors coming out. They're but beautiful. I have, so I have a big meeting this weekend because I really want to turn this clothing line into an athleisure wear that you can wear to the gym. You can go out and that's what I, I would think that. of the shine leggings. I mean, I put them, I'll wear them on red carpet, like put heels in a yeah. blazer with them. They're yeah. gorgeous. Um, and I have so many fun colors coming, but I also want to turn it into like date night, like not just workout clothes. I want everyday clothes, like sweaters and just cool jumpsuits. And so I want to design all of it. So I have a big meeting with my designer this week. You have a lot to do. And then the home decor business. And then that'd be next. Yeah. I just throw that right in there. Yeah. Another book? No. No. <laughs> you're done with the books. Yeah. Done so. <laughs> and your app, do you just kind of keep expanding that? Or yes. Do- so we are launching this week. We're launching a prenatal program. With oh, I love Ostrid that. At, she's in LA. She's a trainer there that's certified in prenatal training. She actually just had her third baby, like literally gave birth a week after she finished filming all the videos. Insane. That timing worked out really well. Right. And she's going to do a postnatal program too after we give her a couple of weeks to recover. But <laughs> the, um, you were talking about starting with lower weight lifting up on the weights. I think there is such a stigma about weightlifting for women because it's terrible. I know, like in the generation I grew up in, we didn't lift weights because if well, you, you did were jazzercise, gonna, so did I. Yeah, we did tai bo, we did jazzercise, we we ran outside, and we were given no information. We had no education on any of it, and just thought if we lifted weights, we'd end up looking like a bodybuilder. So we turned into these women who were kind of scared to lift weights when we get too bulky. But now it Which seems is terrible for your um, osteoporosis. <laughs> to know. So please, how- women, lift weights. I'm not telling you you got to go in there and lift 200 pound back squats. That's not what I'm saying, but I'm not also not saying don't stick with three and five pounds. Okay. So how many times a week and what is our goal to be lifting? I would love to see women lifting three to four times a week, three to four times a week. But also the science will say, don't do distance running. Don't do distance running, blah, blah, blah. Do sprints, sprints, sprints for me to lean down Mm -hmm. the best thing for my body. So you've got to learn your own body for me running. Yeah. I have to do my strength training because you got to build that muscle. You need, you don't want to just be lean and loose skin. You need that muscle to support your joints. Like the reason my knee doesn't hurt is because I built the quad muscle up to mm-hmm. support around my knee and I worked on range of motion. At PT. Yes. And at home. I at did home. every day, like every, and I still go to PT. I'm two years out of surgery and I still go to PT every do week. You, because you want to, or because it was recommended. I feel no, like people don't nobody stick recommended with it, it that long. No. Yeah. no, my PT is amazing and he is the best thing that's ever happened to my body. Literally, if I if anything's like, oh, this feels a little off, he helps me. We get it adjusted, we fix it. PT, if you find a good PT, go. Stick with it. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. As we get older, this aches or this aches and he fixes everything for me. I my joints, everything, my knee feels the best it's ever been. So like I've been on this rampage to see if I could hit by so PFT was your fitness score um in my Marine Corps days which was back in my 20s I was like can I hit my run time my three is it was always a three mile test can I hit that run time so now that I did my distance running I cut back as I hit my lean down goal so I cut back the distance now okay. just to save my knee I was like let's just see if I can get my speed back and so that's been my mission and I I test once a week yeah to see how, how close are you I would have hit it this week. So I test at PT. I'd run at PT and I would have hit it this week, but the treadmill went out when I was at 2.92 and I was finally going to beat it by 10 seconds. So I was going to hit my goal. My goal is 2020. Yeah. 20 minutes, 20 seconds for three miles. And I, it was right. I think I was going to hit 20 minutes, 10 seconds. It might've been 20 minutes, 11 seconds. I was like, okay, that's just God saying, I think you need to try it one more time. Next time. So yes. Next time. I will hit it next time. So if someone is at home saying, well, I can't exercise because I have bad knees or a bad hip, Let's, would be going to PT. Please go to PT. Step? Please. Like people say, I can't squat. That means you can't sit down on the toilet. That means right. you can't sit down in a chair. If you can't do functional fitness stuff, get help. There's lots of help out there. 
If you find a good PT, they will get you feeling better. If you're like, your arthritis is that bad and they can't fix it, and they say, you know what, knee replacement is the only thing you can do, and you've tried to develop muscles, get the knee replacement so you yeah. can move on. That was my mom, and she's changed her whole life. When she got her knee replacement, she finally lost a bunch of weight, but she's been obese her whole life. Yeah. And she finally got her knee replacement. And uh, So you helped your mom lose weight. 100 pounds. 100 pounds. And she's still on her journey. Is it perfect? No, absolutely not, because she never worked out a day in her life until she was 68. Not once. What made her decide? She got diagnosed with diabetes. That was her wake-up call. It's time. Sometimes you need a little wake-up call. So at 68, your mom was like, I'm doing this. Was she 68? She might have been 67. She's 69. She might have six, seven. I don't Does know. she live in Nashville? Yeah. Does she live here? She's a teacher. I don't see her a ton because she lives out of the city and we live in the city. Yeah. Teacher and her hours are a little mm-hmm. wacko. But um, but during the summer, I helped her one summer. And we, like, wow. the first time she ever, she actually started my pretty muscle lap. Love and, it. And it was really fun. I, every day I did it with her. And she changed her eating too? Oh, no wine, oh, no wine, no chocolate. I forgot. So she cut, yeah, she cut the wine out the wine. and she does drink. I think she drinks tequila for the most part now <laughs> okay. when she drinks. You've got her on the she tequila. She doesn't drink very as much as she used to. And her eating changed drastically. She actually finally followed my book, The 4x4 Diet. She swears it because she hates being told she can't have anything. And she also hates repetitive eating. Where I love repetitive eating, mm-hmm. my mom is as opposite of that. She doesn't want anything two days in a row. And I'm like, just keep it simple. <laughs> but she won't do it, so which is fine. So she's able to do it and change it up, though. Yes. Following that. Yes. Is she feeling so much better? Oh, my gosh. It's amazing. Well, what's really cool is her confidence, too. It's really cool. But yeah. she's not perfect because mm-hmm. she's she doesn't consistently work out. Like, I'm hoping to get to the point that she consistently wants to do it. Yeah. But she's consistently walking, which is what is amazing. So... But the knee replacement was the game changer. The game changer was the knee replacement and the diabetes diagnosis. It's sad that it took that to happen, yeah. but she's able to control it and cut down on meds and I'm beyond happy and proud of her. So there's really not an age where you're like, because I think I do think a lot of women are like, oh, I'm 60 or I'm 70. It's but too late for me. The, it's never too late. Don't you want to feel amazing? I mean, don't mm-hmm. you want to be able to go walk on the beach? Don't you want to be able to walk up a flight of stairs and not feel like you're going to die or your knees are killing you or... Hold your grandkids. Run, yeah, run like, around yeah, with like your grandkids. Like everyday life. Don't you want to be able to walk your dog? Don't you want to be able to play with your grandkids? Mm-hmm. Maybe get down on the floor with them. It's simple things. I'm not telling you to go look like a bodybuilder. I'm not telling you to look like me. What I'm telling you is I want you to feel good. Right. It's a, that's the most important thing. The The looks are a benefit. Do people ask you, hey, how do I get Carrie Underwood le- Wood's Every legs? Day. How do I get? How do I get this? What do you say to people who... Is it is it detrimental to us if we start off on an exercise or a weight loss plan and, and aim to look like yep. our favorite celebrity? Yep. So I tell wh- them all the time, you're never going to get anyone else's body. You're never. I don't care. Carrie's legs are beautiful, but they're Carrie's legs. Right. So the you could do is, the same workout as Carrie Underwood and your legs will just. You know what? God made you special just the way you are. Mm-hmm. If we were all the same, it'd be one boring world. Everybody's different sizes. Everyone builds muscle different. Everyone's, some people are leaner, some are bigger bone. Everybody's different. And that's what makes us who we are. You should never strive to be somebody else because God made them who they are. You're never going to have the same exact frame. It's just never going to happen. You're built different. Yeah. You can have the best legs of you. I can teach you how to have your best legs, but you're not going to have Carrie's legs. You're not going to have Kelsey legs. You're not going to have my legs. You're not going to have You're going to have your own legs and they're going to be beautiful just the way they are. The answer is you need to learn to love yourself and stop trying to be somebody else. You're never going to be them. Yeah. You're never going to be. If if your whole world is to try to be someone else or have what someone else has, you're going to be one miserable person because it's never going to happen. You are special just the way you are. And I think with social media, I was thinking about this the other day because someone said, oh, I would, I would hate growing up in, uh, you know, as a teenager with social media because there's so much comparison and there's filters and all this kind of stuff. And I said, you know, there is that, but there's also, depending on who you follow, a lot of accounts that are very body positive and they're not just kind of all one shape and size. When I grew up, the only thing we aspired to look like was Seventeen Magazine or Victoria's Secret models. Yes, but they are hot too. That's I mean, the, well, that's, there's, I mean, nothing, wrong bad, with, there's nothing wrong with that. thing. But there was no other option. Right, there was just that. But there was also not any guidance to be that. So you kind of thought, well, I don't look like that, so I might as well just give up quit, or or quit eating. There was there was one extreme or the other. I mean, we've kind of all. I feel like a lot of women. I mean, I've been through that. I was mm-hmm. anorexic. You were yes. How at 18. old were you at eighteen? But so this, and when did you go to the Marines? 20. 20. Okay. Yeah. 
So were you? I, I feel like I've about done for yeah. that at that point. Um, and it was one comment yeah. that happened that caused me to do it. Never. I mean, when I was going, I graduated high school when I was sixteen, and when I was in high school, I, I never once thought I was fat, skinny. Mm. I tried out for football. I played soccer. I swim. I mean, I was just. I was as tom. They called me Pat off Saturday Night Live because I was such a tomboy. She he. No, that didn't offend me. You were just I don't get yeah, like yeah. If, you're not gonna offend me. I don't get offended. Okay. Yeah, I mean everyone can have their own opinions of me, whatever they want, whatever makes them happy. If that fulfills you to criticize me, for, but these are my friends. Like right. the, it was just a nickname because I was the biggest tomboy right. you could have ever met. And wait, what was that? What were we talking about? Anorexic eighteen one comment. Oh, and then my ex husband said one thing. He said you're a beach. Wait, whale. how old did you get? When were you I married? Was, I got married eight days after I turned eighteen. So I started college when I was 16 and I got married eight days after okay. I turned 18. So you got, okay, I didn't, okay, so you got married at 18 and then he, your ex-husband said what? He told me, so he told me I was a beach whale. And I was, I jumped on him. He's like, you're a beach whale. I was like, whoa, I'm fat. Okay, I'll just stop eating. Mm. Isn't and that, that amazing? Isn't that crazy? Because, and everything changed from then on. What made you get help or My eat again? Your mom. She recognized it. My hair's yeah. falling out. Wow. Do you ever have clients that you have to talk to about that? Like, is that I mean, ever I feel like, like a worry? everyone has their, their, I feel like so many women as I so feel like many women, I don't know if it's just our generation or maybe it's not, I don't know how much it is in the younger generation because I don't work a lot of one-on-one with mm -hmm. the younger generation. Um, but I feel like most women have been through it yeah, in I would some agree. way or another, in some way or another. I know they don't, a lot of people don't talk about it, but a lot of women have been through it. And if they haven't done anything, the thoughts are still there. I mean, yeah. most people pick themselves apart. And they don't like this and they don't like that. And you can look at the most beautiful person and I guarantee they pick themselves apart. Yeah. I have come to a place of myself that am I perfect? By no means. Am I beautiful? I, I'm pretty secure in who I am. Am I, do I stand next to the Victoria's Secret models and think I look beautiful? No. But you know what? I'm secure and I'm happy in who I am. And that's what I want for other women is just to look at themselves and be like, I don't care that there's a supermodel right there and maybe you don't look like them, but you're beautiful in your own ways. Like, stop, stop just picking yourself apart from everything. It's so bad. Women are so hard on themselves. So, but we're and also we, hard on each other, right? Well, that's, I mean, Instagram <laughs> tells me that every day. Well, and that's, you know, made me think of that when you were saying that, because you've been talking lately on your Instagram about people's, you know, comments and it, it's almost like you can't win and it doesn't matter. You're, you're never going to be what someone else everybody else wants you to be right. Like they, Oh, I want you to lose 10 pounds. I want you to gain 10 pounds. Oh, not that, not that way. I want you to gain it in that leg or lose it from this arm. It's this demand of how you need to be to please them when they pick up their phone, what they want to see. And why do they care? I want to know that answer. Why do you care? Part of me thinks it's it. I like to, think maybe later in the day they regret the comment they sent you or no, they, they sent me. No, they don't. No, no, they no, 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 don't. Because they will follow up with another oh, mean one. No, 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 no. They don't regret it at all. <laughs> There's and the they'll follow say, up. I stand by my mean <gasps> comment. Oh, and I was just, like, okay. just hit it right home. So you're just, you're a mean girl. That's cool. But when someone says that, I stand by my mean comment. I was like, okay, mean girl. Like, I mean, if that fulfill yeah. if that fulfills someone, bring it on. Because what I want people to know is you are not a going to affect my daily life. I'm very secure in who I am. But like you said the other day, you are will, secure. You will affect somebody else. That's and, and the problem. What about these daughters these women are raising? Are these daughters going to, I mean, I think about my daughter who's in middle school. And I think, are these the kind of girls she's going to middle school with? Are these the kind of, you know, girls well, that send messages to, to one you, another? What I want to tell you is it's not young girls sending me messages. It's all moms. Yeah. It's I, moms. Raising daughters, maybe, unfortunately. I mean, it's not young women. It's women in our generation, 50s. It's like mostly 50s to mid-30s that send me all the hate. What, do, you have like a, not, do you have like a thought hundreds on why? Of, huh? Do you have a thought on why they're doing it? Insecurity? Yeah. You only, you're only hateful if you're an ins insecure about something in your own life. There's mm -hmm. other, why else do you waste your time to be hateful? Have you ever written a hate comment on someone's? I mean, no. I've never, I don't even scroll through Instagram and think, man, that girl needs to lose weight. Right. <laughs> like, or wow, she's so skinny. She yeah. needs to gain weight. I don't even worry about it. Like, it's not my problem. That's their own, they, they'll make decisions of what's okay for their body. Like, that's. 
it's ironic, I would never though, stop, that, take that energy. It's ironic to me that we feel we can tell someone they're so skinny, but they, if you gain 60 pounds, it's unlikely they're going to say, oh, you've gained a little too much weight. They're like, you do you, sister. Yes, right. go. <laughs> yes. But skinny is really frowned upon. Skinny is frowned upon. Now, there's portions of skinny, like there has to be a, a healthy skinny. Like you still need to have, be able to have strength. I mean, yeah. And I don't even call, I, I can, I consider myself lean. I have muscle mass. I mean, I do 400 push ups three times a week. I do 60 pull ups three times a week. I run, I do six days of weights. Like I have strength. Am I lean? Yes, I'm lean. But also, I think sometimes for people forget my profession. <laughs> This is your job. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Like you forget, they, I think they forget that. You can't be a personal trainer showing up to train somebody. But out it's of not shape. even that. It's like trainers like to challenge themselves yeah. too. You know, like, I, I mean, it's just, it's, I'm in the fitness world. Like, it's okay for me to lean down if I do it correctly. And they just can't find the unfollow button sometimes. Did you see that thing I posted with that Tammy? Yeah. I reposted it. It was yeah, the, the trigger, I mean, I've triggered that Tammy. Thing. It's amazing. Oh, Tammy. If, 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 oh, Tammy. <laughs> okay. If everyone watching we'll this has not we'll seen to, it, you've got so, to put it at the end we'll of this. We'll have to put it at the end of this. It oh, is, it's, it, 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 oh, you went into her DMs. Oh, did the, you go in the, the comment section, Tammy? I the mean, very so last amazing. part, the very last line. Yes. What's the last line? About Jesus. <gasps> if everyone... <laughs> Because often that you go into their profile. It always is. Christ follower, helping women be the best version, live, laugh, Psychologists. Love. I get a lot of psychologists too. Love and my like, kids. And I'm like, gosh, like what? Girl I, mom. I get that. I'm and like, you oh. know that everyone, you might have a private account, but everybody can see your bio. So I, yeah, it's. You know what? I. Trigger Tammy. That's just Trigger name. Tam Trigger everyone Tammy. needs to it's watch just, Trigger Tammy because so it is a funny good. and everyone should spread it because it's hilarious. And I think everybody yes. should see it at least once. I've watched it probably a oh. hundred times. We were one of my clients and I were just watching it this morning and just laughing. I was like, why does everybody not watch this? But um the bottom line with that is hey, whether it's too skinny, too fat, the answer is don't judge other people's right. bodies. Mm -hmm. You're not them. No. And what I want for myself. I didn't do for anybody else. I didn't go lean down because it made you happy on Instagram. I leaned down as a journey to see if I could get back to where I used to be going through perimenopause and coming back. It was like basically my comeback journey. Could I do it? Mm -hmm. It was, and I didn't tell anybody. The only person that knew I was doing it was my son. He didn't actually, I was even know I was doing a lean down. He knew I was going to run the half. My husband was the only one that knew. I never talked about it on socials. I did it for myself. You just I did, did it, it slow. It was slow. And everyone thinks it would happen fast. But I started in June and mm -hmm. I hit my goal in November. So it was slow. Well, and you just happen to be a public figure. So you're you're out there on camera. So the people will see it. If they hadn't seen it, then and you then wouldn't in have... November, I think did I start talking about October, November? I don't know. But I started when people start asking, Are you lean? Yes. On purpose. Yeah. On purpose. No, I'm not sick. You're not. Don't you love that comment? It's like the passive aggressive. Are you okay? Uh, Are you yeah. okay? Are you okay? I mean, I at least get a hundred at least a hundred DMS about how I'm too skinny. I need to eat. I'm disgusting. Um, you are insulting women. You are, you should never be a trainer. You're the worst thing for health. Um, I mean, just you name it. I've gotten it all. All from women. Oh, it's never been a man. Right. Never. Which makes me sad. But we're on a women support us, women. Yeah, as women. Yes. Yes. Girl. Like, Really, the you, tribe, know it, girls you know what? Girls supporting should, girls. I we mean, don't even need to be women supporting women. No, it just should to, just be a good person. Like just be a decent, how, how about a, just be a, be a just, decent human being. It isn't hard. It isn't hard to be nice. No, you. It takes effort to be mean. It yeah. doesn't take effort to just keep scrolling. <gasps> and you know what? When you see something good, say something. I actually learned that recently, and I was I like, need to start doing it more. And I actually is like a year ago. Someone said something to me, and it stuck in my head. I don't remember the exact words, and I was like. So now I do it. I'm like, oh, I love your outfit. And I'll just say it. You said, I'd be like, oh, that's a cute outfit. Keep going. But I wouldn't right. say anything. Because it makes them feel good. So, Or I'd be like, oh my gosh, I love your haircut. Mm. I need to start doing that. We, should, and, we all need to start doing kindness that. Kindness isn't hard. And if you feel like leaving a mean comment, scroll to your next post. Listen to Tammy. Listen to Tammy. <laughs> don't, don't be a Tammy. <laughs> okay, I have a very serious question for you. Because every time I oh, see you- Oh, you want to know why I'm so cool? I'll tell you. Okay. Just go, kidding, you just you kidding, can do that too. Kidding. Yes. And then followed by another very serious question. Because every time I see you do this, 
Uh, so I also have talked about this a lot in my kind of late teens, early, uh, twenties was overweight and then went like you, the extreme opposite to lose weight. Cause I just didn't know how to lose weight. And I only knew if I wanted to lose any weight, I would just stop eating and exercise mm -hmm. like crazy. And I lost a lot of weight really fast. And it took me a long time to get to that place of just feeling, you know, every time I would get pregnant, I would feel um, panicked of how am I going to get back there? But the one thing that always helped was jumping rope because as soon as I would jump rope, I would start losing weight. I would love how my legs would look. So I see you jumping rope my all the time. So this is my very serious question to you because how do you not pee in your pants? Yes. I knew that was coming. I can literally go to the bathroom. I can drink no liquid for five hours. Same. Go to the bathroom. Same start jumping rope. And I don't even know if it's like a secret reserve. I don't know where it, it came from. It, it, so um, how are you doing this? Not peeing your pants is my oh, very serious is, question. So I, I, for years, I only wore black and my husband does all laundry. He'd be like, man, your laundry stinks the worst. I was like, you're welcome. <laughs> you know, whatever. We laughed about it for years. He found it on a commercial one day. I was actually outside in the gym and he goes, Aaron, I mean, this had to have been like five years ago. Maybe no longer than that, like seven years ago. Okay. He said, Aaron, I found something for you. And he went to the store and got him. It was poison pressa. They go in like a tampon. It's like two triangle heads, like two pyramids that meet. This is not where I thought you were going. No, no, no. It's the best. <laughs> <laughs> were you, or is your mind a little dirty? Uh, no. no. Go. Oh, okay. 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 So it goes, it inserts like a tampon. And so I can only wear it if I'm not on my period. Cause obviously if you have a tampon obviously, and you can't wear yeah, it, it's not a double and it stops. So it comes in three different. So you get the variety pack. <laughs> He went and got me the variety pack and it goes one, two, three, and you figure out what size fits best for your vagina. There you go. Yeah. And figure that out. And once you figure it out, then it stops you from peeing in your pants. I mean, so it doesn't, you still pee when it's in, like you could still go, like if you have to go to the bathroom, you still go to the bathroom with okay, it. Okay. You don't have to take it out to go to the bathroom. No, but, but I'm but sure it this would help with like running any, if yes, women are like, I can't the do trampoline. this, I pee my pants. It's, it's, it changed my world. And there's also, because usually there's just like pads, poise pads. Yeah. I don't, I don't do those, no. No. but there also is PT for it. Really? There's vagina PT. <laughs> it is this, actually this has taken a whole new turn, but it really works. Vagina physical therapy. Oh yeah, absolutely. What does one do in that? They finger. <laughs> <laughs> just, there you go. That's, yes, I mean, they go really ahead. do. And they work on it. Stop. The kegels and all that. Like seriously. And it's really good. Actually. It's a, wow. and a lot of women should do it. I've tried a lot of things. And for me, unfortunately from the mine didn't come from kids. Okay. Mine came from the military where we would be on convoys for like 15 hours and the vehicles don't stop. Well, guys just pee in a bottle and you'd have to hold it and I'd hold it. And my bladder is just <gasps> so overstretched. I didn't even know that could happen things we learned about ourselves. So I, I was slated to have a sling put in Oh, and then it got recalled right before. And I, I was going to say, wasn't there like a, I don't think there is anymore. I could probably go do it now. I think there's like newer stuff now. Yeah. So you can, have... I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I should probably go back to the doctor and have something done. Wow. All and right. I well, now that we all know day. poise. All right. In but like the feminine care aisle. I order them on Amazon. I don't okay. know where they are anymore. Huh? They used to be in every I'm store, sure but I feel are. like they got, they're not in stores very much anymore. I feel like Amazon, they are expensive, worth every penny. But you wouldn't need to wear it. Well, it depends what you I doing. wear it every day. Yeah. Not all day. I put it in like, <laughs> I mean, I, it, now if you pee in your pants, just laughing, then it might help. Like there's, yeah. there's women or Which you sneeze. And, of, I like, don't do that. But a jump rope thing is not man, a good I situation. Will sneeze sometimes. Sometimes I have to hold sometimes, my crotch yeah. and sneeze. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, is that getting older? Thing? What age do you think that happened at? 29. Yeah. <laughs> After kids, something like that. <laughs> I mean, young, but I have no shame. Like I do whole videos where I pee all the way down to like mid quads. I'll show it all. I have no shame in it. Well, then you're relatable. People are like, okay, that's me. I mean, it's women. Yeah. It's the majority of us. And then they'll send you a mean message about it. Yeah. I love that. Um, I, care. I want to close with a question for you. Not peeing. Oh, so we don't have to go to the bathroom. To the woman who, because I think there are so many out there, and I think even for me at one point, I was probably that woman who is listening or watching and is just at home feeling not great about herself. Her confidence is down here, whether that's 
self-induced or from what other people have said, who's feeling not comfortable in her own skin, not comfortable in her clothing. Maybe she's got young kids. Maybe she's working eight, 10 hours a day and just feels so overwhelmed with the thought of trying to get her body in the best shape for herself. Where does she start? What is the first thing she does tomorrow? Go for a walk. Go get for outside a walk. and get some vitamin D. Vitamin D does a lot for your mood, your energy, and just feeling better about yourself. Mm-hmm. Walking does. Walking and vitamin D. Get outside, get some vitamin D. Carrie, my, our face girl's probably like, no yeah. sod! <laughs> With the hat on. <laughs> but no, seriously, get outside and get some vitamin D and just start walking. It's a mood booster. Step one. Some people will say start your nutrition first. I say it's easier to start your nutrition when you start feeling a little better. Then you're more likely to stick with it. Mm -hmm. So start feeling better. Let's just get you walking every day. Get outside. Do some movement. Okay. And that's going to start releasing those good endorphins, make you feel better. When you sit on the couch, you're never going to feel amazing about yourself. If you sit on the couch and sweats, you never say, well, I look hot (laughs) as crap today. Like, look at this. I'm beautiful. Like, you have to do something. Make yourself feel better. You can't wait for somebody else to make you feel good. And nobody, no comment or anything is, is like the soul to make you feel better. Like you have to internally find happiness in yourself. Mm -hmm. You have to find the happiness and you have to figure out what is going to make you feel better. If you sit on the couch, it's probably not going to be it. If you're miserable, it's probably not going to be it. Um, If you eat a bunch of junk food, it doesn't bring happiness. It doesn't fix any of our problems that we try to fix with food. Like try something new, do that. And then let's, let's start eating cleaner. And I'm not saying cutting out everything all at once. So maybe you drink five Cokes a day. Let's just cut them back. So it so can be gradual. It doesn't it, it need should to be always, cold turkey. I feel like it should always be gradual. Okay. Slow and steady wins the race. I feel like if you try to cold turkey everything, you're going to quit. And that's why mine is all about a lifestyle. It is. Mm-hmm. It is 100% lifestyle. And then start doing little strength training. I'm not saying you have to go out there and do like 500 squat and jumps or burpees. I have no burpees in my program, speaking of which. Oh, I hate burpees. And well, I think I'm they're so one of the, I think they're one that. of the dumbest exercises. They really but that's are my dumb. personal they really, opinion. Yeah. Well, it's just a fact. I, I never, mean, I yeah. never do burpees. Like I do a bunch of those group workouts and like all over, I tour all over and go do mm-hmm. mass workouts. And I was like, oh, you're gonna do a bunch of burpees because mm-hmm. it's easy filler yeah. for trainers. No, never, mm. never, never. Why do burpees when you can do all sorts of strength training stuff where I actually put muscle, but whatever. That's not the point of this conversation. Yeah. This conversation <laughs> was how to feel better. Yeah. Um, then just slowly start doing things to eat. And then let's add in a little, like eat cleaner, slowly start cutting things back. Maybe just start cutting your sodas back or cutting your processed foods back. Don't do it all at one time. If you want to do it all at one time, great. But most people just give up right. at that point. They can't handle it. And so do it slow. Okay. And then start adding little strength trainings in, little bits. Don't, don't say, I have to go out there for an hour. Most of us don't have an hour. Mm-hmm. Like, start slow. Say, today, I'm going to do five minutes. Five minutes is better than you did yesterday, right? Okay. So, five minutes is great. It's slow. Yeah. I mean, are you going to get results? No. It's better than no minutes. But that five minutes next week can lead to 10 minutes. Mm-hmm. And then you can lead to 15 minutes. But if I go out there and say, you need to do an hour. You're going to look at me and be like, I'm not doing an hour. That's boring. Yeah. And you know what's funny? Is mm-hmm. we say, well, working out so boring. But then we say sitting on the couch is so fun. Right. <laughs> if you, do you ever think about it that way? Yeah. How do we say laying on the couch is really not boring mm-hmm. when movement is boring? You need some great music. It's, it's just, or you listen to a podcast yeah. or you watch a movie or whatever. But how, how is moving boring and sitting is not? Because we've just become used to being entertained, right? It's done for us. We need to change our mindset. We do. We do. Sitting should be your break for movement, not not sitting has become the life and then your break is to go walk. It's supposed to be the opposite. You should, sitting should be your break from movement instead. Okay. And you're a big fan of if you're at work and you have a 15 minute break, get up and move. You don't need to wait to be done at the end of the day. No, take your lunch, take your lunch with you. So you don't have to go wait because the amount of time that you take to get to a restaurant and you wait in line Mm -hmm. and then actually eat all that time you could have been moving and and you're going to eat healthier because you're not going to eat restaurant food. And I think a lot of offices have like even gyms nowadays or just go on a walk. You don't have to go to the gym. Just walk. Walk. I mean, maybe you're in a dress. You can still do squats in a dress. (laughs) 
<laughs> you I literally like can't kick those yeah. heels off. Oh, yeah. Just some squats. Like, sit up and down out of your chair. Like, it doesn't have to be fancy. I mean, you can put on a band and do some pulses like this. Yeah. Work that booty. Fire off those glutes. Mmm. <laughs> Use your app. I mean, do you put your baby down for a nap? Go for yeah. a walk with the stroller? There's lots mm-hmm. of things you can do. But the one thing you have to do is drop the excuses that everyone finds. Drop the excuses to pick up the results. Yep, you'll find the results when you drop Find them. the results. I already mm-hmm. got that. Yes, pick up the results. I love it. So what's next? Your home line, maybe? Anything so else you want to tell us about? really, really excel the clothing line. Like there's I so much wait. coming in. It's just slow. You know, it takes me about nine months from the time I order something to have it, the fabric, and then to get to Houston, get it made. And then I get it's about nine month process. Okay. So it takes time. But I have lots coming. I'm really excited. I have so many cool colors. I have ribbed. I have biker shorts. I have matte fabric coming because right now I'm just shine and the shine leggings are stunning. They really are. And if you're, and my mom's like, I'm never wearing shine, Aaron. I'm sorry. You'll never catch me in those. I was like, you're going to buy one pair. So I made her Is buy she, a pair. What color did she get? She started with, she got the black first. She got the black first. Mm. And then she ordered three pairs of the black. She ordered the mocha and she says they're her favorite leggings she's ever wore. And she's like, I can't wear this to school. You know, she's a teacher. And she's like, I can't wear shine. I was like, wear the shine. And she's like, everybody loves Everyone my leggings. Everyone loves my leggings. And so I was like, don't say I can't. Be secure. Mm-hmm. You look beautiful. You look, Why look, is it? Look at all the she's work like, you did. But look at the attention I get. I was like, well, well, I don't see the problem. Wow. You look beautiful in them. Go rock them. I love that. I love that you did that for your, well, your mom did it for herself. She did it for herself. And they're you so, they the really way. are the most comfortable. There's no camel toe. There's no front seam. Huge, you're going to look, no front seam. No That's front huge. seam. Double end seam. And it's got a V in the back. You're going to look bootylicious. You'll thank me for them. <laughs> but it's Aaron Oprio basics and there's some cool stuff coming. But I really, my focus right now is, is that. Okay. Well, we'll I mean, put that, all this the app, stuff up. That, oh, I have a really cool challenge with the app that's going to focus on like perimenopause and menopause and stuff. Well, Perfect. I have a doctor that's okay, going to be doing do it that. with me. I need to get on that challenge. All so right. that's going to happen in, in a couple of weeks. Well, awesome. So there you go. Well, I have really loved speaking with you and getting all of your inside scoop. And you are just, I, in my mind, such a light on Instagram and just a great motivator. And you're one of those if I'm scrolling, I'll see you. And sometimes like I'll scroll past people and I'll just think, it's not that I don't like them or want to see their stuff. I just, I'm not in that moment. But whenever I see something from you, I just always know it's going to be uplifting and motivating and kind of just giving me like a pep in my step. So well, you're sweet. I think most people would feel that way. I really appreciate it. Unless they're triggered to Amy and then they will. Well, trigger Tammy loves then they'll me. Be, then they'll no, no, be sending no, they'll you stop. a line message. They'll stop. All right. <laughs> they'll trigger, stop. Trigger Tammy. Yes. Trigger Tammy going. did not unfollow. Oh. <laughs> trigger Tammy loves to love on me. I just call it extra love. I was yes. like, she must really love me to take the time to yes. write. Thank you, Tammy, for loving me. <laughs> well, I am so excited for the clothing line and everything else you have coming out. And I hope you will come back again and visit us another time. And before we leave, I know that you, I've actually heard this before. I know you shared with it today that your one kind of lovely treat, cheat food is donuts. Favorite. And it does seem odd to gift you this at the end of this podcast, but there is, wait, here's Cole. Okay. This is one of my, I don't know if you've ever been here, favorite donut shop. Wait, it's in Brentwood. This? It's called Peace, Love, and Little Donuts. Have you ever been there? That's one I have not been to. I swear okay. I've been to every donut store so, in Nashville. Well, I'm about to rock your world. You can take these home, share them, do what you will. They're, share with who? Yes. Okay. Myself? So this is like maple bacon, Oreo. Uh, this is M&M. M&M. I think that's a Heath bar. There's one with like coconut, but happy. Aaron. I was like, I and look, this is a donut store I didn't even walk to. Yes. It would take you a little while to walk there, but nah, that's actually less than six miles. Four, yeah, that's true. For you. Thank you so much. Mm. Gifting the trainer donuts. This is where my mindset was and at earlier in the day. people be like, you don't eat donuts. <laughs> I do eat donuts. Oh, well, I will perfect. eat all of them. That's yeah. the answer is I will have. So the way I donut is I get one bite of each donut. Okay. And then I pick my favorite and go back to that one. Perfect. And then I get a second bite and that's how I do it. That might be a little hard with those, but she said those were the top 12 sellers. Thank you. All right. Thank, right, thank you for you. being here. Thank Enjoy. you so much. All right. Thanks. <laughs>